All sound is measured and expressed in decibels. Now, what we generally do, since we have, you know, the, the sound spectrum for the sound that you hear ranges from 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz. Now, that's a huge frequency range. In order to be able to work with that, we typically break it up into eight octave bands. Each one of these octave bands represents a discrete frequency width that we're looking at for that type of, air, uh, of noise. So each one of these is gonna have a dB level. The dB level is gonna be an unweighted overall level of all of the frequencies in that octave band. If I sum these all up, I will have an overall dB level for the entire frequency band. And we might say that this is this the space is 55 db it does not tell me what frequency range has the contains most of the sound all it tells me is that the overall level is 55. if we want to approximate what we hear we use what is commonly called an a weighted filter now the a weighted filter reduces the low frequency sound in tremendously and slightly amplifies the high frequency sound. It simulates what the human ear hears. And then it gives you a dBA weighted. So you might see this space was 45 dBA. Again, all it gives you is the overall level. It does not tell you anything about the frequency content. So you don't know what it sounds like. You don't know if it's rumbly or if it's hissy or if it's got midtones. None of that information is available. In an attempt to try to get a little bit more frequency content out of it, the first attempt was what is called an NC curve. Now the NC curve, what it pretty much did is it took the A-weighted filters and it created a curve that if I say if I had an NC30 curve, what it's saying is that the overall level of an NC30 curve would be 30 dBA and it tells you what the highest levels for each of the eight octave bands are that would give that 30 dBA final result. So if you have this NC30 curve and all of the curves are published, and if you plot what you measure in each one of these octave bands, the highest tangency point determines what your NC level is. Now, this is okay, except if I have my tangency point at 125 hertz, it is going to sound completely different from another signal that has a tendency at 2000 hertz. The 2000 NC35 is going to be very hissy. The 125 hertz NC35 is going to be very rumbly. So once again, I have an NC, but it doesn't really tell me, unless I can see the actual curve, where that sound really exist. The next step was the development of what they call RC curves. Now an RC curve looks at the sound spectrum, the same spectrum that an NC curve looks at. Only what it does is it calculates the average value in the speech interferency range. The speech interferency range is this frequency range that most directly affects my ability to communicate. It's usually 500, 1000, and 2000 hertz octave bands. So I take that average and that becomes my point. From that point, I draw a 5 dB per octave slope line. Now I look at the actual measurements of the sound with relation to this 5 dB per octave line. And what I look at is anything below 500 hertz, I give a 5 dB tolerance. If I'm within, if I don't exceed that line by 5 dB, I won't have any rumbly characteristics. Above 500, I chop that down. I give it a 3 dB tolerance because once again, I'm looking more toward now in the speech interference range where I want a tighter tolerance. So if I don't exceed 3 dB, I don't have a hissy type system. So now what I've been able to do is say, well, this is going to give me an RC neutral if I didn't exceed any of those tolerances. If I exceed the low tolerance, it's going to be an RC whatever rumbly. If I exceed the higher tolerances, it's going to be an RC whatever hissy. 
So it gives me a little bit of an indication as not only to the overall level as it affects speech communication, but also to the quality of the sound, which is going to be rumbly or hissy. Now we've gone one step further. We've tried to qualify the expected reaction, the personal reaction to that sound. And they come up with what they call the Quality Adjustment Index. Now the Quality Adjustment Index basically looks at the, how exactly what the difference between your actual measurement and the neutral RC line is. And it sums up these differences for all of the octave bands you're measuring and comes up with an overall index. And what they're saying is, if that index is less than five, you have a neutral spectrum and nobody's gonna complain. If it's between five and 10, you've got a spectrum that probably 75 to 85% of the people will be okay with. If you're over 10, nobody's gonna be happy in that spot. So now we have a method of determining what the overall level is and how it affects the speech communication and an index that gives us the expected reaction of the people in that space. So it's gotten down very, very tight. We can look, know what the level is and we can tell what the reaction is going to be. Compare that to the NC, which just basically says that your chances of meeting a level are gonna be pretty good. You're gonna be tangent at some point, at which point it is, we don't know. And to the DBA value, which basically tells you this is what the level in the space is. I don't know what kind of, if it's all, it, see the DBA value could be in one single octave band. It could be way up there and everything else is gone. Nobody's gonna to wanna to be in there because it's gonna be horrible. It's gonna be a pure tone, but it's gonna meet your, your DBA specification or your NC specification, but it doesn't give you the information you need.